So I've never done that. Okay. <laughs> Shuri, I've started the YouTube. You can start the... Uh, uh, uh. Okay, I'll record it. Yeah. Yeah, Kamni, you can start. Yes. Let me first wish all of you a very good day. Uh, the AIWC South Zone B and AIWC Trivandrum Branch have been jointly hosting a number of webinars during the pandemic period to help the members stay in touch and also empower them during this period so that they can return to normal activities with uh, renewed knowledge. The AIWC Trivandrum Branch has launched a literary and cultural forum under the able leadership and guidance of Dr. Jamila Begum. Every month on the first Friday, we invite eminent speakers from the literary and cultural field to talk to us. And today, today's is the 17th session of uh, the literary and the cultural forum. And we have with us a very eminent teacher and scholar, Dr. B. Hariharan. He's a professor and head at the Institute of English, University of Kerala, Rwanda. Before joining the University of Kerala in 2008, he taught at the Postgraduate Center, University of Mysore, Hassan, Prajyoti Niketan College, Pudukar, and Christ College in Nalipura. He is a director of the UGC Area Study Center for Canadian Studies in the University of Kerala. He was the uh, coordinator of UGC ASAP project at the Institute of English during 2015 to 2020. He is at present the vice president elect, president elect of Shastri Indo Canadian Institute, New Delhi. He has completed a major research project on a study of cultural and architectural expression of public spaces in Kerala. He has published a monograph on the novels of Robert Proch, edited nine books, of which one is a collection of the interviews of women artists in Kerala's professional theatre. He has also translated four books from Malayalam to English. The translation of the text, uh, uh, Don Quixote Kathagali is getting ready for the press. And uh, today's uh, title or topic that is going to talk about is Kathagali and Don Quixote. Dr. Jamila being not here, uh, I'll be coordinating uh, these, uh, the webinar. I know I'm not a good substitute for Jamila, but somebody has to do the coordination, so I've taken up the task of doing that work. So welcome you, Dr. Hariharan, to this webinar. I also welcome uh, the members of all the other branches of AIWC to this webinar. Over to you, Dr. Hariharan. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for giving me this uh, opportunity. Uh, I am very delighted to be part of this event. Uh, I had uh, joined earlier as a participant, somebody who was listening avidly to the presentations. I've done that, but today uh, the roles have changed a little bit. And here I am uh, to share uh, some of my thoughts uh, on uh, the remarkable transformation of uh, the Spanish hero, Don Quixote, uh, in uh, Kadagali, into Malayalam, into theatre. So what I would like to focus today on is that remarkable journey of uh, Don Quixote from Spain to uh, Kerala uh, and, uh, and uh, the idea of the journey and the transformation of not just uh, the character, but then um, uh, the transformation of genres, transformation, uh, and what transformations effect and what they do uh, for us in terms of, uh, let's say, art and appreciation. So this is uh, largely the focus of my presentation. If it becomes too academic, feel free to stop me in between. I tend to get carried away sometimes. Um, let me begin by saying that, um, as we all know, uh, Don Quixote is a very, very fascinating uh, novel published in two parts. Uh, is there any disturbance that is coming up? There is another uh, uh, program that is happening there. Somebody has switched on the mic. 
Is that no, sir, everything is fine? That everything is fine. That is fine. Okay. So, as I said, uh, uh, the the novel uh, published in in Spanish uh, that itself has a very fascinating history. We all know about Miguel de Cervantes uh, writing this novel, and we all would have uh, read the abridged version of it, or perhaps even the fuller version of it. But what is really fascinating for me is that. The first uh, seven chapters that we get to read in this book were uh, actually uh, the seed from, uh, from which the novel kind of evolves in the sense that those seven chapters kind of build up on the idea of a playlet that Cervantes was trying to conceive. He started doing a playlet, a short play or something like a skit uh, around the story of uh, uh, Quixote. And it was this that really blossomed into uh, uh, this remarkable uh, novel, which also did, in a way, establish the form of the novel. So uh, the, the idea that I'm trying to, uh, to point out here is this, that there is already something of the performative, of something that can be performed, uh, worked in into, let's say, the structure of the uh, novel itself. Um, the, 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 let me now mention very briefly about the title of this, of this novel. Uh, I've been pronouncing it as Don Quixote, uh, but when we write, uh, the spelling in English is slightly different. It's Q-U-I-X-O-T-E. And we all would have heard it as quicksort, and we talk about quicksorting behavior. So um, this is how uh, many of us would have grown up listening to, uh, to, to, to the story. And we have um, the main character, Quixote, and of course, his uh, sidekick, his companion, uh, San uh, Sancho uh, Panza, uh, pot-bellied um, sidekick, a very rustic person, very down-to-earth person. This is a story I'm not going to develop or talk about the story or the incidents, what really fascinates um, us, uh, let's say from Kerala, is the journey of this novel from Spain to Kerala. It's a remarkable itinerary that you have. Uh, if you go and look at this novel, examine this novel, you would see that the, the titular hero goes on any number of, uh, let's say, adventures or even misadventures. And that idea of adventure is so very central to the book, to the novel. Now, I say that it's so very central because you have uh, the character, uh, the, the, the real name of Quixote is not Quixote, it's Quixano. Uh, the, the, that is the, the Spanish uh, term, that is the real name of this hero. Now, Kishano is uh, an avid reader. He loved to read romances. And he starts living in the world of those romances. And if you examine the structure of the romance, you, you get to discover certain very interesting things. In the romance, you generally will have a hero and a heroine. And the hero will go on many adventures and win finally the heart of the beloved. And there will be a whole lot of um, uh, uh, difficulties that he would have, many hurdles that he would have, and he would overcome that. Now, uh, generally in romances, the hero and the heroines, they never age. They never age. Uh, time, as it were, comes to a standstill. But the idea of adventure, the idea of valor, that is so central there. It's a remarkable world of make-believe that you have in any romance for that. And you had any number of romances, uh, Orlando Furioso, for example, uh, is, is a case in point. So you have all these other models that came, romances that were written, and you have this hero reading these romances and then imagining that he is transformed himself into a knight. So there is this idea of transformation. There is this idea of adventure. And he goes on these adventures. He, he, he starts living in the world of make-believe. Now, this is 
the, the, the story that you have. So the idea is that you have in the novel a remarkable juxtaposition, a remarkable engagement with uh, the ideas of illusion and reality. You have the world of illusion that these romances create and then the character inhabiting that world of illusion. And the way in which the, the world of illusion intrudes into the real world, into the world of reality. Now, it is this that is quite, it's quite possible to handle this in two volumes. But how does one present this on stage? How does one dramatize this? Now, this is where the story gets really interesting. This is a novel that has been uh, translated the most next to the Bible in the whole world. So you have the journey of the novel through different languages, through different cultures. You have the hero of the novel traveling through many lands, encountering, facing uh, many adventures, and then surviving those adventures. It's a, it's a very fascinating journey. And when we talk about any journey for that matter, what it does is you also, as the subject of those journeys, you also get transformed in very, very unforeseen and very fascinating ways. And it is this transformation that you get to read, that you get to see in the novel. Now, this is one part of it. Now, this uh, uh, so, so 400 years of Don Quixote was something that Spain was celebrating. And Spain came to India and they wanted to see if it will be possible to uh, have an Indian rendering, an Indian version of Kadagali, of, of, of Quixote in Spain. And that's when they came to Trivandrum, they came to Margi. There was this discussion at Margi. Margi was chosen. They came to, uh, to Kerala and then uh, uh, the discussion was on and, and uh, people here, uh, Margi, suggested that it would be possible to do it. And there is one man who could really translate or transform this novel into Kadagali. Now, I must say something about Kadagali. I said that the novel is 400 plus years old, 1605. It's around the time that Kadagali also established its roots in Kerala. So what you have is the way in which the novel emerged, evolved in Europe 400 years ago. And around the same time, you have Kadagali as a genre, as a performance genre, establishing roots in Kerala. So you have two very distinct, dissimilar genres, but then coming together uh, uh, in that moment of birth, which again uh, is a matter of happy coincidence. So you have the novel uh, getting translated across cultures, across uh, languages, coming here, and then um, Margi taking up the challenge. What Margi did was it uh, requested uh, the vice president of, uh, of the organization, Dr. P. Varnu Gopalan, who was the editor of uh, the lexicon department in Kerala University, to uh, do uh, uh, to, to, to to render the novel uh, as Kadagali. Now Kadagali has had um, uh, retellings of uh, European epics and classics and stories from the Bible, etc. In Kadagali, but not many stages were there. So uh, when Gopal uh, took a look at the text and he uh, did not commit himself. So he uh, gave me a call. I remember that evening. He gave me a call and he asked me to come visit him. And then he said that uh, there is an assignment. And the first question he asked me was this. How do you spell the title of the novel? And he said uh, that we have all heard that this is pronounced Don Quixote. Uh, now, is this how the, novel, the, the title is pronounced? So uh, I told him that... Uh, uh, the pronunciation of the novel in Spanish is Don Quixote. So he asked me, are you sure? I said, I'm sure. This is how it is pronounced. And I had to uh, uh, kind of uh, make him listen to the pronunciation, the various ways in which it is pronounced. And then 
he said if you are saying that the the name is pronounced kihote it will be possible to do an atakada uh, of this novel atakada is the um, the the script that you create to produce uh, the play on stage atam is to enact and katha is story so the story that you will enact so you had to have <coughs> a separate structure separate narrative for that which has um uh, three parts four parts actually for every scene you will have a, a sanskrit shloka at the very beginning that will that will set the scene and then you will have the pallavi the anupallavi and the charanam now this is the structure of a typical scene in kadagali so you have if you have to do this you have to be clear about the language that you use in kadagali what happens is the shloka is always written in sanskrit and the pallavi the anupallavi and the charanam is uh, uses a certain kind of a malayalam which would have a strong presence of of sanskrit also it's, it's a kind of a sanskritized version of malayalam you might say or even a malayalam version of sanskrit it works both ways so this is the grammar of the atakada so what venugopal was trying to tell me was that it would be very difficult to translate this this novel in english into the form of the atakada if you have to pronounce the name of the hero as don quixote says so it will not be able to render this in the song in the background so this was the task and he said we will do it so the next challenge was this two books two massive volumes how will you uh, render this as uh, an atakada you can have overnight performances performances that run for four days or five days as you have in nala and damayanti story but this will take much more so you have to have something uh, that will be suitable for a very contemporary audience so something like 3 and 1/2 uh, to 4 hours maximum 3 and 1/2 hours ideally so uh, you had to read the novel so you read the the you have the english version and then in 2005 there was a malayalam translation he read the malayalam translation i gave him my copy of the english translation and the challenge was to take scenes which would capture the substance of the idea of illusion and reality this um uh is that that the soul as it were of the novel so the challenge the biggest challenge was to capture that so how do you do this because the the novel is something that you read so how do you translate that novel into another text which will have to be performed so this was a task that had to be addressed and he did that i would say beautifully with seven uh, acts which had these number of scenes so uh, there was this whole question of what to choose and what not to choose so he chose this and he would write the slogan uh, the the charanam and then once he does that he would probably give me a call and he would read it out and we will discuss this over the phone and he'll talk about how he was trying to visualize the whole thing so uh, it was a very interesting process of composition that happened and uh, uh scenes had to be written had to be rewritten the whole uh, writing part was done and then the challenge was to set it to music how will you set this to music so you had to have uh, the singers the percussionists you had to set set it to raga you had to identify the ragas that would be suitable for this and then see how it could be sung how it could be rendered all this was done and then uh, you had to have the the uh, the actual practice uh, for the actors which is in kadagali called chulli atam chulli chulli means to to utter atam is to act to perform so performing the story so this is chulli atam so you had the chulli atam so uh, the the whole uh, production uh, the whole, the whole thing went into the production mode with a number of sessions of chulli atam for which the director from spain also had come so they wanted to actually experiment with this and try and see if they could bring in something of spanish theater into kadagali which uh, was very difficult which was a really really big challenge so uh, you had to integrate that 
So what happened is you have um, uh, uh, the the Spanish text, uh, which was not fully Spanish. You had uh, the, the the you had Catalan and Spanish. If you look at the original Spanish novel, so from that Spanish novel you come to uh, the from from the written two languages you come to uh, Kadagali, which is another kind of a translation into a very different mode altogether, where you have Sanskrit instead of Catalan and Spanish, you have Sanskrit and the Malayalam that is used for Kathagali. So in a way, you, you discover that it is possible to, uh, to render that complexity in language in the Atakada. And you try to show the story through gestures, where you try to interpret every word through your hand gestures and the kind of expressions that come on your face and the movements on the stage, supported markably by the singing and the percussion. So this, uh, was, this is a remarkable exercise in translation. We generally talk about translation, let us say when, when we talk about uh, a book, from Malayalam to English or English to Bengali or whatever. But there are other ways in which one can talk about and even understand translation. And this is what happened. So you had the Chuli Atam, on, uh, and which was progressing well. And that was, it was then that another question came up. Now, this was to be performed. Of course, it will be performed in Kerala, but it had to be performed in Spain. People in Spain do not understand Malayalam. So what do you do? So then they said that you have done this, uh, the, the, the Atakada and we have the performance. Now, during the production, we want to have a translation of the, the, the Atakada, the text that you're performing, which will be projected on screen, on the stage, on, on, a, on one side of it. So they said, we want an English translation of the Atakada. So from Spanish to English, to Malayalam as novel and from the to Atakada, which is a different form altogether in Malayalam. And the Malayalam Atakada now rendered, translated into an English Atakada. But that alone was not enough. But because how many people in Spain read English? So what I was supposed to do was to translate the Malayalam Atakada into English, which itself was quite a task. Because the, the rhythm that you have uh, in the Atakada of, of, the, of the Padams is very different. How do you translate that into English? The, the rhythmic structure uh, is very different. So how do you try to capture it? So again, you have to look for the soul of the text as it were. And this is what we were trying to do. So I had to do that into English. And whatever I did in English had to be sent to Spain because somebody was there who would translate the English uh, version into Spanish. So what you have is Don Quixote going on all those adventures in the novel, dying at the end, living in the novel, living through the novel in all those many languages and living again another life, as it were, in Kathagali in a very different uh, medium, in a different form, trying to uh, recreate again those emotions and those feelings in this different form. And at the same time, trying to live differently, a different Quixote life as it were, in the English translation of the Atakada and living further another life in Spanish, in the Atakada translation in Spanish. So there's a remarkable way in which the Spanish Quixote does this journey, goes through this journey or takes this journey, this pilgrimage as it were, through all these languages, through all these forms, through all these experiences, and goes back to Spain. It's a remarkable adventure. Uh, very fascinating adventure and I must say that uh, it was very, very enriching. 
the kind of nuances for example that were that were the, that we were trying to capture them now this would be incomplete if i do not um talk about uh, the way in which one had to conceive of them on the stage how would they how would these characters appear on stage this becomes a very similar question because we have the artakatha but then but how will uh, the characters appear on stage some of us uh, would have uh, seen kadagali performances some of us would have heard about kadagali it's a very stylized kind of a theater and the makeup the costume everything is very distinct distinct to kadagali so uh, there's a lot of makeup that you have which functions uh, or which does the function of the mask so there's a way in which you mask the face so you have characters which uh, which would be using green color all over the face so this is called pacha pacha is green the color is green but they are all sattvic characters then you would have the kati character kati in malayalam literally would mean knife but then these are characters uh, who probably could be kings or who would probably have uh, certain very aggressive tendencies i don't want to say that they are bad characters one can think of uh, someone like ravana for example ravana would be a kati character right ravana is a kati character you can think of duryodhana as a kati character now we cannot say that they are evil or they are bad they are very aggressive and there would be distinct marks that uh, uh, that that you can see uh, that you can really you can really make out between the difference between a kati and a pacha character there are many others also the woman again uh, it would be generally men who do the performance do enact female roles <coughs> so that is called the minik it's called the minik uh skin tone more or less on the face and uh, uh the costume is also like that so we have the minik so these are the three types of characters who come and of course what about sancho uh, sancho panza what kind of a character would he be so um Uh, Quixote is a kati character. It's not a pacha character because of the the complexity that you have um, uh, in this character. So uh, I would say it was very apt that uh, when Gobalan decided to have the kati kind of vesham uh, character costume for 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 Quixote because of the of the worlds that he that he inhabits. Sancho, on the other hand. Uh, the the costume was taken not literally not exactly from kadagali sancho's costume was taken from the idea of the jester that you have uh, in another theater tradition in kerala which is perhaps the oldest living form of theater in kerala and that is kudiyattam it's a sanskrit theater so from kudiyattam you have the character of the vidushaga in kudiyattam so it is from the character of the, from the character of the vidushaga that the costume of uh, panza evolved in kadagali uh he is a he is a stout man with a pot belly very down to earth person who speaks his mind and that's exactly what the vidushaga does so it was very appropriate and you have two other knights who come here on stage those two knights are pacha because they come there to fight with kihote to bring him back to his senses to take him back to his village so they are pacha characters now apart from this <coughs> you also have kishano that is the man who reads these romances there again it was it was a very innovative way in which you try to introduce uh, uh, kishano on stage so it is a very unlikely kind of a <coughs> kind of a costume that you had for kishan so uh so these are uh, the characters that you have and of course you have um, uh, a brief appearance of uh, the the beloved of uh, kihote uh, her name is dulcinea uh, uh where you have a remarkable dream sequence which i would say is Uh, 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 a very bold experiment on stage of how kadagali it also tells you something of the strength that kadagali has that it is very comfortable in handling uh, 
a complex novel like Don Quixote and also try also uh, very successful I would say in handling this whole uh, <coughs> uh, mirroring effect as it were of uh, illusion and reality. How would one dramatize on stage uh, this whole thematic of illusion and reality and that's exactly what the novel does. Uh, however much I talk about all this, it will not give you the feel of what I'm saying. So what I'll do is I'll very briefly mention one incident and then show you this uh, to tell you this remarkable transformation and journey of, of Quixote. We all know that Quixote fights with the windmills. It's a, it's a very famous scene, much anthologized, much read, studied. We would have read it probably as children, uh, anthologized, edited works. We would have probably narrated this to a whole lot of people. So you have these windmills. And so what Kishano sees, Kishano sees only wind, uh, sees them as, uh, as, as devils uh, or knights who are there to, to attack and carry away beautiful maidens. This is what uh, <coughs> Quixote sees. Sancho, on the other hand, sees them to be what they are. He sees them as windmills. So what you have is the world that Quixote inhabits and the world that Sancho inhabits. And that's where you have the play of illusion and reality. Now, how do you dramatize this on stage? How can you show windmills on stage? For that, you have not the pacha or the kati. You have something called the chuvanna tadi. Tadi means beard. Chuvanna means red. Red beard. So, uh, in traditional Kadagali, you have the Chuvanna Tadi for uh, someone like uh, Dushasana or, or uh, Kali in uh, the story of Nala and Damain. Two examples. So, on the stage, you have the, the windmills being represented by two uh, Chuvanna Tadi characters. So, how do you present windmills in Kadagali? This is, I would say, the remarkable strength and resilience of Kadagali and how, as an art form, it's able to take up uh, some of these nuances, <coughs> uh, things that we think are purely Western, how it can adapt them to its own uh, dramatic purposes for communication. <coughs> so what I will do now is I'll try and share the screen of this production, which is about 10 to 11 minutes. It's all, almost five, five. So uh, I'll be, well within the time that has been allotted to me. What I'll do is I'll share the screen. Uh, yes. So if there's a problem with the sharing, do let me know. I'll optimize for video clip. I'll say share, scout, share sound. Yes. Yes. <laughs>
Is it? Uh, is there? A... It has stopped now. It stopped. I, I'll. I'll. Let me see what's happened. <clears throat> One second. <clears throat> I don't know if Usha can help. Can you, Usha? Yeah, it's uh, the the it is, it's not showing me that it, it's the pause sign that I'm getting. So uh, I don't know what. Usha. What yes. Usha. I Shana? think you uh, stop the video and start again. Maybe it will. Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me let me try to do that. Let me see. Let me see. Okay. I think I must just... uh, maybe you have to close it. Yeah. Again. Yeah, I did that. I uh, I stopped sharing. Now uh, now let me see. Let me see. This. Yeah, it is coming. One second, one second. I, I don't know what what happened. Okay. Let me see. Let me see. <clears throat> I don't know if it stopped. I think I think it's a problem that that is there with the system. Just reading it. Is that, Thank you. 
play. This is right. Play with music video player. That's what. It stopped all of a sudden, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know why. What happened? It is. Uh... Ah. Yeah. Now? It's coming? Yeah? We can hear it, but not see it. Oh, one second. We can see it. You can hear it, but not see it. Yeah. yeah. Actually, uh, before sharing the screen, uh, yeah. you uh, open the video. Uh, yeah. Just pause it for a minute, then ah. share it, and then come back to the video. That's now? Coming. Now? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Coming. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now it's coming? Yeah, yeah. Now it's coming. Yeah. Okay. Let's put the cure on the tadi. The windmills. This is called Piran Autumn. Their introduction. Attention to both the characters who look at them. Now, this is what he sees now. He sees the aggressive. He doesn't. He both doesn't see the windmill. Let's see what he. I'm telling him, look, they are out to attack. They are devils. And look at what Sanjo is saying. He is looking. Sanjo is looking at them. He says, no, impossible. Yeah, 
One can of course go on. Uh, what you have now is uh, uh, Kishano who reads the book, uh, the, the, the other, uh, the, the real man uh, coming in now and then uh, confronting uh, Kihote, telling his, his other, the alter ego as it were, giving him strength. Uh, and then of course, um, Kihote gets up and then goes on his next adventure. So this is uh, that, that point that I was trying to make about illusion and reality. You would have seen this. Yeah. How um, you, you see how uh, uh, Quixote sees the windmills and uh, Sancho sees the windmills. So this is the dynamics that you have throughout the, the production. And of course, towards the end, it, the, the the production ends with a very slightly diff in a slightly different way, uh, in the sense that if you look at the novel, you have um, uh, Quixote 
uh, returning to his native village and then dying at an old age. It's a, there's only a very brief uh, chapter there if you look at the novel. But uh, when you read this, uh, when you when you watch this production, it is something else. It's slightly different, uh, slightly different in the sense that uh, you have um, uh, Quixote uh, looking up, uh, like in uh, borrowing a scene in a way from from Kudiyatam, where uh, you have this very famous uh, duel between Bali and Sugriva. And uh, Bali, of course, is killed by um, Rama's arrow, and he lies there. And this is a this is a, this is an iconic scene in Kudiyatam where uh, you have uh, someone like like Aman or Madhava uh, for example, enacting death on stage for about fifteen minutes and getting away with it. Uh, so uh, this is something that is borrowed uh, in this production a little bit. Um, so you have uh, the the last scene is uh, by the seashore, uh, and then he returns, um, uh, and these are the words that he um, uh, th that you have that that closes the play. I'll just read those lines in English, like the offering to the sacred fire, the body subsumed in the resplendent soul, in love's sub sublime supernal delight, his words pour doubt. And this is a padam before uh, Alonso Quijano. Quijano breathes his last. What it also does is indicate how this is the journey of the body, uh, another journey of the body, uh, as much as of the word, as of the world. Now, that is how the, uh, the play kind of ends. Uh, Quixote, in that sense, lives many lives in many more languages, in more genres trying to create or creating new literary itineraries for many more adventures. Now, this is, uh, 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 for me, a very, very fascinating uh, experience of the stage and of uh, a literary text. He would end, this is the way in which Piano, uh, uh, the, the play ends. I behold the truth of the cosmic book. It streams its glow of spirit divine. I bathe in this and it ends like this. I am the realization. I myself am salvation. If you look, if you read the, the Spanish version or even the English translation of the novel, it doesn't end like this. Uh, the, the, the production, I would say that the, the text is given a very different kind of a life when the text concludes with this, I am the realization, I myself am salvation. Um, it ends in the traditional style of Kadagali. So this is how, uh, the, the, in a way, that journey that Quijano uh, Quixote began in Spain uh, reaches the shores of Kerala and then from here, sets out to Spain and uh, sets out in very interesting ways uh, on this Zoom platform with um, uh, All India uh, Women's Conference. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. <laughs> that was just so interesting, you know, very, very interesting. And uh, I never thought that this would be this interesting, you know, when you explained it so well, Dr. Thank you. Thank you. Now uh, it is open for discussion. Any questions or any clarification? Anybody can ask. Should I have taken? Yeah, uh, I would like to ask, uh, Doctor Ayyappan. Yeah, uh, how was this received in uh, Spain? Oh, oh yeah. It, 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 the 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 production that you saw here, it was not done like that. The production was very well received. It 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 had at least half a dozen. Stages, uh, they had to do some pruning uh, because they were not able to do the full three and a half hours show there. So they had to edit out a whole lot of sequences. Uh, and it was a very different uh, kind of experience for them. I was not in Spain to watch it, but I watched the first production of this play in Trivandrum on 4th July 2016. And what you saw now is a recording of that. Uh, it was a very different, very, very different experience on stage. 
especially for a European text. Uh, to my knowledge, this is probably the first novel to be adapted to Kathagali. And uh, I think it is this challenge, I think, that uh, really uh, made this experience very profound, very rich. The, the music that they had used in Spain, this is what I was told, they had used some Spanish music also in sequences where uh, uh, Alonso Kishano appears on stage. So they were trying to uh, experiment in a way uh, with uh, something called intercultural theater. So if it's a if it's a, a, a Kathakali aficionado from Kerala who's going to Spain to watch this, he probably or she probably would say that this is not Kathakali because it, it brought in other elements. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so this is the issue. But when you come and try to show it here in Kerala, we wouldn't bring in elements from Spanish theater here, music and things like that. But there were uh, uh, very interesting things that you could see here. The, 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 the presence of uh, Kishano and then trying to uh, work with the idea of the frame break, which is so very crucial in Western theater. You know, this is something that you try to work in into Kadagali. I think this is where the innovation really does or did happen. It might have taken a hell of a lot of time. How much time it took from the company? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. It's, no, no, the thing is, this, this is absolutely interesting because it did go through a number of revisions. You know what happened? What happened was that uh, the production uh, uh, in Trivandrum, after the production in Trivandrum, it went to Spain. And then uh, you had the, the Atacada was there. After the Spanish production, they came to uh, return to India and Venugopalan took the Atacada and he went to Guruvayur because he wanted uh, some time to himself. And then I went to Guruvayur, joined him. He had to rework some of those words and stanzas and lines after that first production, first two productions, as it were. Came back, redid that, worked on it, and then we had to do another translation. We had to modify uh, the, 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 the English version. And so the, when the book comes out, it will be this version that you'll be getting. And the book would be another experiment in the sense that you would have uh, the, 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 uh, the English, uh, the Malayalam version of the Atakada, the English version of the Atakada, and the Spanish version of the Atakada. So it will be a text in three languages. And... I would say that Quixote would have thus embarked on a remarkable journey into three languages. And there is a very fascinating idea of homecoming, where he would have made uh, homes in so many languages and cultures, and then discovers Spanish through Kadagali. Uh, there is a whole different experience of time, as it were. So, one, it would be very difficult to say that it took three months or six months to actually come up with a text like this. Uh, I would say that there's a wholly different experience of time, uh, which I would say would be the, the biggest interpretation that uh, Kerala could give Quixote. Well, this is how I understand it as a student of literature and as a teacher of literature. Tremendous effort. Very good. Very nice. Very yeah. nice. I can never have imagined a Spanish novel to, you know, so, I mean, to Kadagali. I mean, it tells you a lot about, about the art form itself. The, because uh, there's a way in which uh, we, we get, we are used to watching certain uh, Kadagali performances. But what is the potential that this theater has in our times? How does it speak to us today and how is it so contemporary i think this production is a remarkable example that is a response to that question any other question yes uh, you mentioned that other uh, english plays have been adapted into kathakali uh, yes. can you give an example oh yeah king lear king lear was adapted uh, there was a, there was a, a in my department, uh, some six years ago, uh, we did a Chuliatam performance of uh, Macbeth. King Lear was performed Macbeth Chuliatam, where you had uh, only Macbeth on stage, but then without wearing all the, the makeup that you saw, 
it was the uh, you could see the actor's face uh, with some ghee smeared on it, and then he came there and you had the percussion, and uh, the text of course was in uh, uh, you had the the Malayalam text was not the English version because you had to have the Panani and Shingiri the the the, the singers there, and uh, the entire play presented through Macbeth. uh it was for about one and a half to two hours so which again was a very different uh very innovative kind of a kind of a take on shakespeare um uh, the, the, i think there are some uh, stories from the bible also uh that have been uh, uh produced in kadagali uh, <coughs> uh some of stories of some of those saints that i have not watched any of them uh but uh, the macbeth chuliata mafia and king lear i think is also available uh, in youtube it's a, it's a very challenging task because uh, you, you are trying to work uh, you you read one language and then one kind of a semiotics or one kind of a theater and then you are trying to see where exactly would a traditional art form meet this because if you are looking for example at, at at a play like macbeth macbeth uh, was produced was done under very different stage conditions this play was done that play macbeth i would say was done in english conditions as cricket commentators would put it but here you have a very different uh, theater very different kind of a stage very different demands that the stage would make of you and how is it that you would interpret it what are the kind of techniques or what are the kind of strategies that you would probably use to make the story come alive um uh, how would, how would you show uh, uh, let's say uh, the the monologues or the the soliloquies of macbeth how would you approach how would you interpret this character on the stage because you have an actor who shows you macbeth who doesn't become macbeth which i would say that is the biggest difference in when you watch this kadagali you have an actor who shows you something of quixote's behavior the actor doesn't become quixote so you have an actor who shows you the behavior of quixote and then you see quixote there i think this is a subtle thing that happens and this is what happens in every kadagali play so it could be kalamandala gobi uh performing the story of nala appearing as nala but then you don't you don't see kalamandala gobi sir you see only nala that will be gobi's nala yes Th- like, there are things that, that it was uh, very interesting to see the way the windmills were uh, shown you know, absolutely yeah, absolutely very yeah. interesting and uh, uh, you mentioned that uh, the whole play takes 3 and 1/2 hours Yes. So was it uh, was the entire uh, play staged anywhere and how was that yes, received was, whether in it, Kerala or otherwise Yes it was staged in Trivandrum uh, more than once and uh, in its entirety of 3 and 1/2 hours they were not able to do it in Spain because they had other logistics there were human rights issues in the sense that people had to they had given a time people had to return home they couldn't uh, sit for long hours together like like what we do in kerala uh, you begin the performance at 10 at 10 o'clock in the night it will go on till 4 o'clock in the morning and 5 o'clock you reach home and then sleep in spain it, it was not possible so they were not able to do it so they had to edit out certain uh, certain um, certain scenes certain sections um, <clears throat> there is a scene where uh, you have um, somebody coming with a cage two cages with two lions in it presenting it for the king and uh, kihote says look i am brave i can tame these these are not lions i'll tame them and then uh, the, the 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 keeper of this uh, tells him don't do it they are all very ferocious they have not had food and uh, kihote says no problem and then he goes and he opens this uh, the door and they all and uh, sancho for example he is expected to run right into the audience and with the audience watch the play and tell the audience look this is what is happening right so uh, there's a way in which you break the fourth wall and there's a way in which uh, that particular scene takes up a very crucial uh, let's say indicator in the novel if you if you read the novel if you come to the opening of book 2 of the novel 
book two opens with a direct address to the reader so as we were discussing this play as him see i i told him sir there is this particular very fascinating thing that happens sir because that is where you realize that you are reading a novel so you become conscious of the act of the fact that you are reading the novel when you read it when you say he directly addresses the reader now can you do something like this with in kadagali so we started talking about this and then he said there is this possibility of getting right uh, with the audience and then from here look at the look at what is happening so he made use of this so kihote sorry sancho would be with the audience and then uh, go there and he would make fun of he uh, kihote would look at the audience and look at him and says look tells him that you are you are a coward it's an address to the audience and then sancho would go on stage because uh, what the lion would do is the lion looks at uh, would look at kihote yawns and goes back to sleep because it's tired and is very sleepy and kihote thinks that he has tamed the lion so there are incidents like this so uh, there were very different ways in which you try to capture in a way the spirit of the novel may not be every little incident in the in the novel but then you capture the essence the spirit of the text which is what you do when you translate because you cannot do a word for word translation you try to capture the spirit of something when you translate and all literature all literary text try to do only that you try to capture the spirit try to capture if there is something called essence you try to see how far how close you can come to the essence of something if at all there is something called an essence and i think this is what the translation does this production does we thank you a, that was very interesting we have a, we have a comment uh, in the chat box thank you mr hariharan for such an enlightening talk great amalgamation of two such different cultures thank you which is very true thank you very much yeah thank you anybody would like to ask any question and we have another one also i'll read out from lakshmi bai interesting presentation of fusion of culture and literature thank you for enlightening through this episode the possibility of translating classics to the visual art form which more people can understand yes let me yeah let me also add something there is a uh, there is a video online uh, where i was asked to talk about this production uh, some years back in chennai at a navadisha festival so this is something that they had recorded and it's available online so more details about uh, the, art, the 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 atom and whatever uh, is available there and there was also a discussion at that point some of the things i said here i did uh, mention there also there could be some more additional in- input probably is there in that uh, production that was something i, I talked about some years back other anyone share the link we can circulate that so more people can oh, watch okay. it i i i'll share with professor Com- community center what i'll share that i have to okay get that for me yes. i'll share it with you okay i'll do that and, uh, any more thank you from anybody or any comments usha there are no questions i think or comments yeah then i think uh, we can wind up or what we can wind up so yeah i uh, thank uh, dr hariharan for uh, sparing so much time to speak to us about this very interesting uh, topic and it was actually an eye opener for me kihote is a book that uh, uh, we as you mentioned many of us have read in our uh, childhood maybe in abbreviation in uh, in edited format uh, but then to Uh, see all that again and how it has taken this long journey to come into kathakali it has been very interesting and the type of work the hard work that must have gone into it uh, we can visualize from your words we could uh, understand how much of uh, brainstorming and how much of hard work must have gone into converting that uh, spanish text into kathakali thank you so much for uh, this very interesting session i thank all our, our friends from awc and outside who have joined us uh, unfortunately i have some problem with the network that is why i have joined from my phone uh, so we'll be having again another uh, interesting episode uh, session of uh, this literary and cultural forum next month on the first friday of june 
Uh, so let us all look forward to that. And uh, again, once again, thank you all for joining and thank you, Dr. Kamni, for uh, uh, taking up uh, the, uh, the role with the very effectively. And uh, uh, thank you, Bhuneshwari, for coordinating with the uh, webinar. Thank you so much. So, again, you. Once again, Dr. Hariharan, thank you so much uh, for uh, sparing your valuable time. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.